Hello and welcome to 10th Java training video tutorial. So we reached number 10 finally. So let's have a look at uh, what aspects of Java are we going to have a look at in this tutorial. So we will mainly focus on date and time APIs or methods in this tutorial. Date and time are two very important aspects when it comes to software test automation also because you would come across scenarios wherein you may have to t type in a date which is a future date or you may have to type in a date which is past date or current date or you may have to type date in different time zones so selenium itself does not have any capability to handle such use cases but using java we can generate such test data and then we can pass on this test data to selenium to exercise a form or a field on an html page so let's have a look at what we are going to learn in this session in this session we will see how we can generate time in milliseconds how we can calculate time difference, how we can create date instance using java.util.date class, how we can compare dates, how we can access year, month, day, etc. attributes for a given date, uh, how we can generate future and past date, how we can format dates. For example, different countries follow different date formats, some follow MMDDYY, few follow DDMMYY, and many other formats. And then we will have a look at a complex example which would deal with generating future date for USA time zone. So let's begin with. All right, so I have a new date time package here and I have date time example class here. All of this code is available, uh, can be accessed from the link which is available in the comment section of the video. And I hope by now we all know how to create a package in the class, so let's begin. So we have a main method here and then I am trying to print current time in milliseconds. How do I do that? We have a system class in Java and we can use current time in millisecond method to find out time in milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. And this is something which can be achieved using this method. Now let's see where we can really use this method because current time in millisecond may not give you any important test data. For example, if you want to compare time gap or time difference between two operations, then you can use this method. How do we do that? So let's create a long variable called start time and we have system dot current time in millisecond and then I have introduced a wait statement here which is 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds so let's assume that there are some operations which are carried out here and then some more operation and then we calculate the end time end time is also calculated using the same API which is system dot current time in millisecond and then we can print the time taken between this that is first and this which is last operation how do we do that we say time taken equal to end time minus start time so when i run this uh, uh, main method last we would see that it is 5000 millisecond because this is a wait statement here in the real world example we can calculate the time which is taken to carry out two different operations for example if you click submit button on a web page then how long it takes uh, for new page to load for one user can be calculated using this mechanism Okay, let's see how we can generate date. So we can generate date using the date class which is available in java.util package. So we say date, date equal to new date and then we can print the time for the current date using date.getTime. This method is also going to give us the num number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. Okay, we can also compare the dates using uh, date objects. So I declare a date here called date1 equal to new date. Then I have one second wait period or 1000 milliseconds and then i have date 2 equal to new date and how do i compare the dates i say date 2 dot compare to date 1 so when we run this program we will see that this statement prints 1 which means date 2 is more than date 1 not just this we can also create date from a string uh, arguments and then we can compare which date is bigger than another date you may find many of such validation examples in a form wherein a form does not accept past date or a form does not accept a date which is too ahead in future and those can be verified using this example okay let's see some more use cases let's let's deal with calendar class now so in java we have a gregorian gregorian calendar class which implements the calendar abstract class so let's instantiate this how do we instance instantiate gregorian calendar class we have done it many times uh, so we create instance of a specific type and then we assign it to base type. So the Gregorian calendar implements calendar, for example, we can see its implementation here. 
which is here Gregorian calendar and sorry it extends the calendar class it doesn't implement it so it extends the calendar class so we instantiate Gregorian calendar and we assign it to base class this operation is very similar to how we create Firefox driver instance and assign it to base class which is web driver all right so how do we get current time from calendar object so we use calendar dot get time method not just this we can also access different attributes for given time for example year month etc how do we do that for example if we want the time zone then we say calendar dot get time zone if we want year then we say calendar dot get and this method needs an integer field and this integer field is something which we can get from calendar class here so in calendar class we have fields like year so we can use year and many other fields for example i use year for year month calendar dot month if we want to find out the day then we say calendar dot get calendar day of the month for year uh, sorry for week we say day day of week for week of year we say week of year for week of month we use week of month and for hour of the day we use hour of the day let's see how we can generate future and past date now so we already have the instance calendar and if we want to add uh, a date which is a future date then we can use something called calendar.add and calendar.month1 it means it would advance the calendar by one month no, not just month we could have also used here calendar calendar.year followed by one two or three that is if we wanted to advance the year by one year or two years or three years the same operation can be carried out if we want to generate the past date how do we do that so i have created a new calendar instance here calendar 2 and then i say calendar dot add calendar dot month but here i pass the minus one it means it would generate a date which is past date and then i can print it using calendar dot get time method which we saw earlier as well now that's the formatting of dates as i mentioned earlier that different countries follow different format formats for dates so this api can be used to format the dates how do we do that so there is a class in java called simple date format which can be used to specify the format of the date how do we do that let's instantiate an object of simple date format we write simple date format simple date format which is the name of format one which is the name of the object equal to new simple date format and then we pass the format so here format is yyyy hyphen mm hyphen dd where y is for year m is for month and d is for date so once we create the simple date format object then we pass the date object to it which is to be formatted so we had created date object here yeah here it is and then after creating the simple date format one object we are we are calling the format method and we are passing the date object to it and then we can print the formatted date because we get the formatted date now this is one example of formatting date using yyyy mmdd format and then we have another example where we are using dd slash mm slash yy and we are also using our colon minutes here rest of the program remains same that is we create simple date format 2 we format the date and then we are printing the formatted date now let's have a look at a complex example consider that we have to generate future date for usa time zone that is the date which is advanced by one month how do we do that let's create an instance of gregorian calendar here so i have instantiated Gregorian calendar here and I have assigned it to calendar calendar one and then we had seen earlier that we can advance month by using the add method so this is what I am doing here I say calendar one dot add calendar dot month followed by one so month is advanced by one now let's define the date pattern here so the pattern I have taken the same as per previous uh, example of uh, simple date format which is dd slash mm slash yyyy hyphen hh colon mm and now we define our simple date format object here and then we pass our pattern to it this is same as the previous programs or previous statements but we are also passing a local here so local what i'm passing here is local.us so we have the calendar object here calendar is advanced by one month and we have date format is specified here for us now how do we combine these two <clears throat> So in the calendar object there is a mechanism to get the date object so i write calendar one dot get time which would get me the date object and now i know that i can format my date object on simple date format three using simple date format three object so i write simple date format three dot format and i pass my date three to it and now when i print it that is formatted date for usa then it would give me 
one month advance date for US. So let me run this program and see all these statements one by one. All right, so it's running now. All right, so it's over now. So let's see statements one by one. So first we are printing the current time in millisecond from January 1st, 1970, which is a huge number. And then we have a uh, time calculation between two time, uh, two time, two operations where we had made a statement for 5,000 seconds and it has come down to 5,001 milliseconds. So we see that it's not very precise, but 5,000 and 5,001 uh, millisecond is not a huge difference also. Now let's see accessing date here. Uh, so we, are, we had instantiated date object and then we were using get time method and then we are printing the current uh, date time which is being printed here which is again a value in millisecond it may not make much sense using this number but later on we compared two date objects date one and date two and we said date two dot compare date one and if we see we get one here it means date two is ahead of date one which is obvious because we waited for one second after which we generated date two which is which should be more than date one okay later on we had created instance of Gregorian calendar and then we got the uh, then we use the get time method to get the current time so this is the current calendar time which is the current time for me which was printed when program was run so it is Tuesday December 13 1858 CET 2014 today for me then we had various methods uh, for accessing different attributes of the calendar for example get time zone so time zone gives me this big number since I'm in Berlin now so it prints Europe Berlin for me then we have calendar year so year is 2014 then we have calendar month month is 11 so month counting begins with 0 is December now so it is 11 day of the month is 23rd which is today's date day of the week is 3rd day of the week is 3rd yeah today is uh, uh, third day of the week and then we have week of the year so it is 52nd week which is the last week so new year is coming soon week of the month is fourth and hour of the date is 18th now it is seven o'clock but the time when I run the program it was little less than seven o'clock and then we have generating future date so I just added month uh, one uh, I just advanced month by one and then I'm generating the future date here so if we see here we have got Friday January 13 2015 which is one month ahead and then we were reducing the date we were generating the past date here so if we see here we have got November 23 uh, 2014 which is one month less than current uh, time then then we are formatting our dates so first example for formatted date is this one uh, so this is the formatted date which is formatted is YYMM and DD format and then we formatted date again but we added hours and minutes here so this is the new formatted date with slash and hours and minute and then we had our last example where we are generating the future date for USA time zone so this is the example where we, wherein we have used Gregorian calendar we advanced the calendar by one month we have our simple date format pattern here wherein we are using locale as us and then we get the date object from the calendar object and then we format our date using simple date format object so if you see here finally we are printing formatted date for usa so this is the formatted date for usa which is advanced by one month so it is 2301 2015 which is one month ahead of now so if you have to key in say future date for USA in this format then you can use this example and you can pass on this data to Selenium and then you can use the same key APIs to enter the data. So these were a couple of examples or exercises for date time operations. Uh, let's see if I missed on anything. We generated time, we calculated time difference, we created date instance, we compared dates, we accessed different attributes of a date, we generated future and past date, we formatted dates and then we generated a complex date. Alright, so looks like we covered everything. I hope you find this video educational and if so then please hit the like button. Uh, good luck with learning and see you again in the next session. Bye bye.